Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor with FreedomOutpost.com and ResurrectTheRepublic.com. I'm doing this short video in a response to some of the individual trolls who have come to the site and want to try to attack the Jade Helm 15 drill for mastering the human domain as a joke. These individuals apparently have either A, not paid attention and actually listened to my entire video, or B, did not read the document. So I want to specify some things. Number one, I have been accused by some trolls of attacking our military. I've never attacked our military. I never will. I love our military men and women. I'm an ex-military wife myself. I did my time as such. I also know and realize that some people cannot accept the fact that people in very high places are giving very unlawful orders and they just cannot accept the fact that our military on the lower levels are being used by the higher ups in order to target the American people. It's not just the American people they're targeting, it's humanity itself. The saddest part about this is that our lower level in the military are also being targeted under this psychological operation which is known as mastering the human domain. It is considered the seventh war fighting function, which I will prove to you in just a moment. However, I do want to say that even though these trolls are out there, I hope and I pray for you daily because the sad reality of it is you're targeting yourself. Our active military that are going along with these drills and following these unlawful orders that violate posse comitatus, that scare the fire out of the population, they try to do it through the PSYOP in order to control every aspect of human life. It is for infiltration and control. Our military are targeting our own families and our own selves, and a lot of them don't even realize it. Many people in the civilian population do not understand that in the military you are on a need-to-know basis. If the higher-ups think you don't need to know, they don't tell you. There is very, very strict compartmentalization within our military. You're expected to follow the orders no matter what they are. And unless our military men and women have researched and studied the Uniform Code of Military Justice, duty to disobey, then it has been literally pounded into their head, starting at boot camp, that you do not question your superiors, that you do not disobey your superiors, no matter what the orders are. And the reason for that training is it could prove to be detrimental in times of war. It is always expected that the superiors would have higher intelligence gathering and that they would know exactly what was going on even if the lower level troops did not, but that they knew enough that would make every part of their mission, no matter what the command was, that it was imperative in order to accomplish their goal. So with that said, I want to say this. 
It does not matter if you trolls like me or you don't. I love you anyway. I don't have to know you to love you. My love for you is unconditional. And I will still continue to speak out with truth, with facts, with documents. I will not quote New York Times. I will not quote mainstream media. And I will not quote propaganda. I would also like to address that several individuals have stated the comment that I'm doing a scare tactic about martial law. Never once, until right now, have I stated that Jade Helm 15 is implementing martial law in the United States of America. The truth is, we've been in a soft form of martial law since the 30s. The other truth is, if they successfully accomplish Jade Helm 15 mastering the human domain, they will have no need for martial law. Why will they have no need for martial law? Because they will have won the psychological operation and have control of the complete population here in the United States of America. Anyone who is military or veteran can tell you unconventional warfare, asymmetric warfare, and population-centric issues. They train in areas that are consistent with where they are going to be. Before I share these documents, I want you to think and ask yourself a question. Because some of these individuals are also stating that it's for training overseas. It is for training for embassies. It is for training for Afghanistan. It is for training in Iraq. It is for training, you name it, overseas. Well, when are they going to take the Department of Homeland Security? our local police force, our FBI, our TSA, our ambulances, our EMTs. When are they going to take our county commissioners, our fire departments, and all of the many other local agencies and interagency partners overseas with them. Please tell me that. It's not going to happen. It is a way to integrate into the population and them train together. It is called a special police force or SPF, according to the RAND Corporation. So, once again, if you're a troll, or you want to make stuff up, or you want to misquote, just move on. Because I'm fighting for every human life in the United States of America and abroad. And I don't have time for three-year-old childish games. The people that are within the borders of the United States of America, whether they are citizens or not, their lives matter. Our military that are being taught to target civilians, their lives matter. Our military families, their lives matter. 
our veterans, their lives matter. So the only way to stop the web of lies is, of course, to keep exposing it. I want to thank all of the individuals who left comments underneath my videos, both positive and negative. I do appreciate them. However, I don't appreciate paid trolls because paid trolls have sold out the human race for probably $10 an hour. And the funny thing is, is those same trolls, when those people come knocking on their door and yank them out of their house, or when your property is stolen from the globalist elite bankers that are taken over via UN Agenda 21, Oh, of course not called that anymore. It's under the auspices of sustainable development. Or under your county board or some other name. But it's a blueprint. So, you'll be whining and crying and mad and upset because your things get stolen and your $10 an hour job no longer comes if you work 40 hours a week to $400 a week because they've stolen pretty much all your paycheck through taxes and then you whine and gripe and complain about that so instead of fixing the problem you cry for more government handouts so they can steal more of your money. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to go to the documents for Jade Helm 15 for just a moment. It is not going to be the entire document. This is not going to be a two hour video. This is just to address a couple things and show you once again what the real issue is behind this. The real issue behind Jade Helm 15 is the mastering the human domain. It is the most dangerous part of this entire operation. And Jade Helm 15 doesn't start July 15th through September 15th like it says on that presentation. The psychological operation and the intelligence gathering began when it was released. All right, so here we go. This is Operation Jade Helm. This is the request to conduct realistic military training or RMT Jade Helm 15 by U.S. Army Special Operations Command. I am not going to go through this document right now because I know most of my listeners have already been through this document. So I'm simply going to say this. I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to show you what some of the problems are. Now, what to expect? Expect an increased military presence. Increased aircraft in the area at night may receive noise complaints. Some individuals may conduct suspicious activities designed to prepare them for complex environments overseas. Local law enforcement officers are fully aware of the exercise. Local footprint will be 60 to 65 personnel. Personnel may be carrying weapons with blank ammo, and some participants will be wearing civilian attire, driving civilian vehicles. So, Jade Helm 15. Right here is the insignia for Jade Helm 15. As you can see, you have Jade Helm 15. You have a sabat in the center. That is not um, a splotch. That is actually known as a sabat, which is a wood clog. Sabat means sabotage. Look it up. 
master the human domain. So this is the USAWC Civilian Research Project. And this goes into mastering the human domain. I'm going to scroll down. I am not I'm going to go through this entire document. If you want to know this document, you need to read it. It's extremely important for you to read this. You, if you want to understand just how bad mastering the human domain is, then you need to read this document. Before I get to the human domain part, I'm going to read this. The seventh war fighting function. Another example of attempted institutionalization within the U.S. Army of the concept of conventional forces and special operations forces. Interdependence is currently evidenced by ongoing deliberations by Army staff and Chief of Staff of the Army to add the 7th War Fighting Function to the current construct. U.S. Army uses war fighting functions to help them exercise battle command. A warfighting function is a group of tasks and systems, people, organizations, information, and processes united by a common purpose that commanders use to accomplish mission and training objectives. So I'm going to scroll down now and show you. The seventh warfighting function is defined as the related tasks and systems that support the commander in shaping the operational environment to achieve national and strategic objectives. I want you to remember that because this actually links to the National Security Strategy of 2015 mm -hmm. and it's important to understand that. Recognizing the common and unique capabilities of both conventional and special operations forces this warfighting function stresses the importance of conventional and special operations forces. It stresses the working interdependently and considers the role of the related concepts of building partner capacity, special warfare, and surgical strength. It also helps commanders and their staff advise, assist, and train partners to enable them to contribute to global security and stability. The human domain. Right here. Human domain concurrent with efforts to add a seventh warfighting function is the discussion within the profession of arms over adding a human domain to the current domain construct within joint doctrine. So, what is the human domain? Well, right here it states the human domain is the totality of the physical, cultural, and social environments that influence human behavior to the extent that success of any military operation or campaign depends on the application of unique capabilities that are designed to fight and win population-centric conflicts. It is a critical and complementary concept to the recognized domains of land, air, maritime space, and cyberspace. This concept and the addition of a human domain are important because the other domains insufficiently address the human dimension of conflict although it is deemed a critical component to land power. Further, the addition of a human domain similar to a war, seventh warfighting function will ensure that we are providing a framework to support and employ the complementary capabilities of special operations and conventional forces. So, the acknowledgement of the human domain is an important step to Sun Tzu, recognized for to win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill. To subdue, are you listening people? To subdue the enemy without fighting is the acme of skill. That's the goal. 
they don't want to have to fight and they don't want to have to call martial law. How do you do that? You win it through psychological operations, which is mastering the human domain. Although perhaps a loose interpretation of Sun Tzu, I believe one key to subduing an enemy without fighting is better is a better understanding of the human nature of conflict and building systems within the doctrine. Organizations, training, material, leadership, and education, personnel, facilities, construct of the joint capabilities, integration development system, or the JC IDS. Lieutenant General Keith Walker notes, the rising velocity of human interaction through the internet and social media makes influencing human behavior the centerpiece of military strategy. So if they can influence the human behavior, whether it's through mainstream media or whether it's through the internet, if they can influence that, then they don't have to call martial law. They don't have to put all those tanks in operation that they have all across our country right now. Why? Because you won't fight. All right. So as you can see, this is an extremely important document. You need to read this. So, I'm going to address where someone said, oh, it's just regular drill. This right here, as you can see, so I'm going to address another issue. There are individuals who keep saying this is an average drill, that they do this all the time, they train like this all the time, they must train like this all the time. Well, I'm getting ready to show you it's not. This is army.mil, as you can see. This was a updated press release released April 20th, 2015, and it was released by USA SSC or USA Special Operations Command Public Affairs. Pay attention to this symbolism right here. This symbolism right here is the symbol for ARSOF which is also part of the U.S. Army Special Operations Command or Special Operations Forces. All right, right there. Fort Bragg, North Carolina, U.S. ASOC News Service, April 20th, 2015. Members of the U.S. Army Special Operations Command will train with other armed forces units July 15th through September 15th in a multi-state exercise called Jane Helm 15. USA SOC periodically conducts training exercises such as these to practice core special warfare attacks, which help protect the nation against foreign enemies. It is imperative that special operations soldiers receive the best training, equipment, and resources possible. While multi-state training exercises such as these are not unique to the military, the size and scope of Jade Helm sets this one apart. So even Special Operations Command, in their own release, admits that Jade Helm is set apart from all of the other exercises that they have done. Why? Because of the size and scope of it. All right, you also saw in here that ARSOF is involved with the exercises. Um, during this eight week period right here, This is important to understand. During this eight-week period, 
Airsoft soldiers will use this opportunity to further develop tactics, techniques, and procedures for emerging concepts in special operations warfare. So, you now know that Airsoft will be involved in this training. That wasn't mentioned on the JCOM 15 document, was it? So, so what you're seeing right now is our soft 2022 U.S. Special Operations Command. This is an official airsoft document or magazine. Airsoft 2022 is special edition produced under the auspices of Special Warfare by the United States Army John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and Schools Office of Strategic Communication. Special Warfare is an authorized official quarterly publication of the United States Army John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and School, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Its mission is to promote the professional development of special operations forces by providing a forum for the examination of established doctrine and new ideas. Official distribution is limited to active and reserve special operations units by order of the Secretary of the Army. There you go. So, I'm not going to read all of this. There are some things in here I don't think need to be public. But then again, they shouldn't be turning and attacking our people. So, I'm going to scroll down. And when I mean they attacking our people, I am not talking about our lower level military. I'm talking about the very, very, very high up in command. So please don't twist my words. It is imperative that our plans are guided by and nestled within those of our national leaders and our higher headquarters. The following guidance has defined our role as a force. Using this guidance, we have developed a strategic framework for our way forward. Two thousand ten National Security Strategy. Now what is Special Operations Command? Their duty or one of their duties is to make sure and do everything within their power to implement the President's National Security Strategy. If you haven't read 2015's National Security Strategy, I suggest you do so. You can find Google it or you can find it on the White House website. Okay. So, I am going to scroll down. To show you something. SOF Core Activities. Title 10 core activities as enumerated by the United States Congress. Oops, yes, it's not just President Obama. Direct action, short duration strikes and other small scale offensive actions conducted as special operations in hostile, denied or diplomatically sensitive environments and which employs specialized military capabilities to seize, destroy, capture, exploit, recover, or damage designated targets. <coughs> Number two, strategic reconnaissance, otherwise known as recon. Recon and surveillance actions conducted as special operations in hostile, denied, 
or politically sensitive environments to collect or verify information of strategic or operational significance employing military capabilities not normally found in conventional forces. Is there any political problems going on in America today, guys? There's protests going on around the nation. Corruption is running rampant. This didn't say for enemies of the United States of America. It's for enemies of the United States, which is the corporation, if you don't believe me, all you have to do is Google 28 U.S. Code 3002. Scroll down to 15 A, B, and C. You'll know exactly that the United States is completely different than the United States of America, and it is a corporation which we gave, we the people, gave them permission to stay within 10 miles square, which would be the District of Columbia, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. They've gone, they've taken their business outside of their land mass that they're supposed to be on. Anyone affiliated, like DHS or any of them, they're limited to that 10 mile square too. If you don't believe me, look it up for U.S. Code 72. They are supposed to strictly stay within the corporation confines of the 10 mile square. Okay. So number three, unconventional warfare activities conducted to enable a resistance movement or insurgency to coerce, disrupt, or overthrow a government or occupying power by operating through or with an underground auxiliary and guerrilla force in a denied area. Foreign internal defense participation by civilian and military agencies of a government and any of the action programs taken by another government or other designated organization to free and protect its society from subversion, lawlessness, insurgency, terrorism, and other threats to its security. Now, many people think foreign means in another country. However, if you claim to be a citizen or one of the people of the United States of America, you are foreign to the United States Corporation. You can thank the corrupt globalist bankers for that. Look it up. Now, civil affairs operations, counterterrorism, military information support operations, humanitarian assistance, theater search and rescue, and activities specified by the president. I'm going to go down because this is important. What do you see in this diagram? Here you go. The seventh war fighting function. Right there. Right there. And many of you see this is unconventional warfare, foreign internal defense, stability operations, counterinsurgency, support MCO, counterterrorism, and combating we weapons of mass destruction. So everybody's still on the thought pattern right this second that all this is for overseas, is it? Let's see about that. As you can see, 
foundational concepts for airsoft, special warfare is unconventional warfare, FID, PSYOP, CMS, surgical strikes, <coughs> Still think it's all about the foreigners? Well, let's see. Airsoft 2022 USAOC. Commander's Vision. Provide our nation the world's premier special operations units capable of pr prosecuting the most sensitive special warfare campaigns and executing the most difficult surgical strike operations while providing seamless and persistent special operations support to joint force commanders worldwide. Interagency partners. Right there, interagency. Airsoft and conventional forces. Conventional forces are your lower level military. But everybody says, oh, no, it's it's not for the United States. Well, I'm getting ready to prove you wrong. If you're unaware of what OCONUS and CONUS is, OCONUS is outside continental United States. CONUS means continental United States, which means inside our borders, people. Here, on our land, Airsoft 2022 priorities in order to focus our efforts over the next decade, we have prioritized our requirements into six categories, which are the enabling concepts that will allow us to direct and shape the future development of the force. Invest in human capital. Optimize special, op special operations forces, conventional force, and JIIM interdependence. Operationalize the continental United States base. Operationalize it. Develop special operations forces capabili capabilities at operational level. Facilitate special operations forces mission command and optimize Resourcing the commodity areas. So I would appreciate individuals who keep saying this is for overseas to please research, do your studying, and understand that you're only lying to yourself and you're putting yourself and your family in danger. So what am I going to do? Spread the truth. Optimizing Special Operations Forces, Conventional Forces, and JIIM Interdependence, USASOC optimizes the force multiplying potential of partnerships with the Army and interagency, which means interagency partners, by the way, to provide the nation with seamless combat power. Airsoft must bridge the critical seams of Special Operations Forces, Conventional Force, and Special Operations Forces interagency relationships to effectively contribute to unified action in the 21st century by partnering, partnering with the Army to meet its Title X collective training responsibilities. Operationalize the continental United States base. Regionally expert forces provide continuous proactive support 
to forward deployed forces. There is an underutilized operational capacity in the continental United States based regionally expert forces. This capacity is vital to the mission success and cannot remain untapped. But establishing mechanisms by leveraging technology, we can harness continental United States based capacity to better support outside continental United States deployed forces like artillery in major combat operations regionally export expert forces should not be left in reserve in the conduct of special operations so as you can see a lot of conduct experimentation to determine the optimal balance forward and continental United States based forces. Develop continental United States based capability to provide enhanced unconventional warfare capability to TS OCS including tailored packages to habitually and routinely support GCCs and interagency special activity requirements. These are all interconnected people. They really are. All right, so now that you know that and you've seen <coughs> TC-1801 shows you that Special Operations Forces has to help implement national security strategy. So what is Identity Operations for Strategic Land Power and Mastering the Human Domain. I'm not obviously going to read this entire thing. Everything goes back to the National Security Strategy. What is in the National Security Strategy that you should be concerned with? Well, I can tell you one thing that's in it, the TPP. Section 5 is about the international order. You have sections where Harry Satoro happily is talking about climate change and him having no problem with the executive orders to implement. You're doing away with our national sovereignty. You're stealing our land and other people's land across the world before we can stop it. We must understand how they do these things. Hmm. Within the human domain, it is the unique human identity of each individual in which we are interested. So yes, people, it is not just a group, it's every individual. How do we differentiate, differentiate one person from another? Associations with other events, materials, individuals and networks become additional pieces of information used in the identification process. The individual's identity is to which we attribute his or her activities and whether they are of friendly, neutral, or hostile intent. Additionally, understanding the culture of an individual leads to a better understanding of their beliefs 
These pieces of identity information together with patterns of life enable analysis to provide predictive intelligence with regard to future activities, providing vetted, friendly, neutral, hostile, and unknown identities allows the land force commanders to select the appropriate actions necessary to winning the clash of the wills. These actions may encompass a combination of operations in order to compel adversaries and the innocent populations to act in a specific way. In other words, brainwash you to do exactly what they want you to do. You're not allowed to have free thought. In response to these complex realities, our national and strategic priorities have transformed, favoring new approaches to traditional and emergency challenges, such as homeland defense, the whole of government, partner engagement, and building partner capacity. The United States government has established organizations processes and procedures for maintaining, enhancing, and employing a national watch list of known suspected terrorists for national security purposes. Keep that in mind because I don't know how many of you have studied it. But when you realize who they have as the suspected terrorists these days, you might not be so apt. Go along with this. In the National Security Strategy of 2015, President Obama clearly states that we are not at war with Islam. All right. The shifts in national strategy have seismic implications for the Defense Department of Defense and Strategic Land Power requires fundamental change. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't that what President uh, Barry Satoro said? This requires fundamental change in our traditional approaches to land operations, one focused not solely on nation states, but also significantly on the individuals within the human domain. In this age, the complex environments where our enemies blend into the populace until given the opportunity to emerge, and do us harm, we must use every tool at our disposal to eliminate their anonymity, to separate them from the population which they fight. In the past, we would say to find a needle in the haystack was different, was difficult because the needle was small, yet it looked different from the hay and success was probable. However, when discussing the human domain and our many similarities, identity operations must be capable finding one individual who looks very much alike other individuals. An example, the adversarial needle within the haste within the stack of needles. It is the identity processes that facilitate the discovery of those adversaries. Human domain lives on land, therefore strategic land power has more opportunities than the Navy and Air Force to interact with the population. It is land forces that hold the land operating environment. In this environment, identity capabilities are a critical component of our security infrastructure. Many of our core missions have already been inexorably altered for the foreseeable future and several new responsibilities. Over and above the traditional requirements for land operations have been added to the list of missions of DOD will be expected to execute in future operations. Our capability to effectively discover, resolve, and exploit the identity of individuals encountered in the battle space will be an essential factor in our ability to successfully execute these missions. Back to the USAWC for a moment. I wanted to read this part. Much like the seventh core fighting function within Army Doctrine, the human domain proposal creates conditions within Doctrine to ensure that the human who inhabits 
the operational environment in which the military and interagency operates is considered. Deliberate consideration of factors within the human domain will assist in planning for campaigns, consequence management during operations, and post-offensive operations planning, specifically ensuring that we aren't surprised by a populace's counteraction to our efforts. So, as you can see, this is what is going on. They want to know how we're going to react, how we're going to counteract. What are we going to do? And how are we going to respond via social media, via regular media? How are we going to respond? Who's going to sell out? Who's going to go along with it? Who is not? All of that is being done right now. How did we respond when the Jade Helm 15 broke? This is all the intelligence they're gathering. This is the National Security Strategy for February of 2015. I wanted to pull it up and show you a little bit about it since we know that it is Special Operations Command duty and AFSOF, ARSOF responsibility, help implement the National Security Strategy. All right, security, prosperity, values, and I'm just showing you this. You, you can pull it up and read it. International order right there, number five. There, there's your international order. And, of course, the conclusion. Here's your confronting your climate change. Here's your... Reinforcing Homeland Security and strengthening our national defense. Please read this. There is no human being on this earth right now that should be fighting each other. It is the perfect divide and conquer tactic, and they're using it in order to divide us so that we will not be able to focus on them. Please understand that. Because if you don't, not only will there not be an America, millions and millions of people are going to die. Not because of Jade Helm 15. And I'm not saying that for July 15th or September 15th. But please don't put words in my mouth. But millions upon millions of people will die if we do not stop the globalist group of bankers that are behind it all. Our country. United States of America has already been overthrown. It is not just our country. It has been overthrown by globalist elite bankers and their military. As much as I love Rome, take marching orders from the UN and NATO. So I hope that this video has been a little bit helpful. And I'll do more videos tonight. My heart is broken. If 
was broken for all of the people around the globe. It's broken for our military, it's broken for our veterans, it's broken for my neighbors, the children and grandchildren. If we don't stand up and stand together with humanity against these satanic individuals and powers, there will not be a tomorrow for our grandchildren.